Okay, hello everyone. Guys, we'll look at the day seven assignments here. All right, there's four of them. We're gonna go through them fast. Let's start with the warm up. It's just a couple problems. Again, guys, we're solving quadratics. All right, this is day two of solving using square roots. But we're getting ready for the test here too, all right, which is Thursday. Guys, what's the solution to this quadratic? Look at the best answers, all right? This one looks like right here, negative two. All right. Oops. I should just do it like this. All right, does that have a, yeah. This one here looks like 1.25, 1.3 maybe, yep. All right, go ahead and take it. Next one, guys. Again, okay, you have a table. Look at the y values. We'll see that one's right there, zero. Look where y is zero, right there. So one of the solutions is one. So why don't you take that? One of them is one. The other one is between the, where the two, positive two goes to negative one and a half. You see that? So move over here. It's between negative two and negative three is another answer. Look at the x for the answer. Right between negative two and negative three. Find your answer. Go ahead and take it. All right, guys, the next one is going to be applying. I'm going to put it underneath the dot cam. Guys, these are some real world problems. We're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. All right, if you remember, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared for a right triangle. These are the two legs of the right angle, the a and the b. And the C is the hypotenuse, the long side that is opposite the right angle. All right? So it's 12 squared times 5x squared equals 37 squared. That's the setup right here. I multiplied it out. I subtracted 144 from both sides because I'm trying to isolate that x squared. All right? Then I divided both sides by 25, and I got 49. Square root of both sides, plus and minus 7. However, in the real world, and these apply problems, guys, one of the answers doesn't make sense. It only makes sense for it to be positive 7, all right? Next one, guys, a little simpler, and this is how it's going to be on the test. They will be right triangles that are um, isosceles. So the two legs will have the same length. So it's x squared plus x squared, and that's 2x squared. All right, this side is 8 squared, that's 64. Divide both sides by 2, I get 32. Take the square root of both sides is plus and minus square root of 32. Which again, if you guys remember, 16 times 2 gives me plus or minus 4. Again, only the positive root works. Only the positive distance. Guys, again, for this, we're going to round it to the nearest... Uh, two decimal places, the nearest hundred. So put it in your calculator. All right, that's what I got. Next one again, another triangle. 5x and 5x. This side is 50. So here's the setup. All right, multiply them out. Combine the 25 and the 25, so I got 50x squared. Divide both sides by 50. All right, when I divided this by 50, This became x squared. This just became 50 again. This is 50 times 50, it turns out. Square root of both sides. Again, I got a 7.07. .07. All right, only the positive answer makes sense. <clears throat> All right, the next one is a, a falling problem where you just, like, drop an object. All right, this will be on the test. One of something like this on the test. Is a carpenter drops a hammer off a 90-foot roof. Guys, this is the equation. There is no linear term. Remember for falling objects, this is, there was a V of velocity term in the middle, VO times T. But the initial velocity is zero. So for a falling object, this is the equation. All right. So again, I just put in the 94 and solve for T. Took the square root of both sides, and this is what I got. All right, 2.42 seconds. 
and only the positive one makes sense. Got the next one again, same problem. This one just changes to 38 feet. All right, it's the same setup. So when you move it over, it looks like that. This is kind of what the setup will look like. So this is the initial problem, but the setup kind of looks like that. There's two negatives, so when you divide out, you get a positive number. All right, take the square root of both sides, and I got about a second and a half, 1.54. Okay. Guys, the next thing is the worksheet. Go ahead and take it out. Again, I'm going to move fast, guys. I'm running out of time here. All right, we saw by taking square roots. I'm just going to show you what it all looks like so you have the key. All right, square root of both sides looks like this. Again, square root of 8, I can go 2 times the square root of 2. This one has no real solutions because it's negative. Right, added 4 to both sides and took the square root, 13. Right, this one ended up being 36, so it's plus or minus 6. This one was 0, guys. So P was just 0. Of course, guys, if P is 0, negative 7 equals negative 7. All right, guys, this one here, divide each by side by 9. Took the square root and got this. All right, this is the two steppers. Add 10 to both sides and then divide both sides by negative 3. Came up to 45, took the square root of both sides, and that's what I got. Same with this one, the two stepper. Added or subtracted 3 from both sides and then divided both sides by 2. Square root of 20. All right, this one's pretty straightforward. Subtract 5, divide by 3. I got plus or minus 8. This one again, subtract 8 from both sides, and then divide both sides by 6. I got 4. Square root of that, plus or minus 2, okay? There's the last thing. Ooh. All right, guys, sorry about that. The last thing was the exit ticket. All right, again, we're kind of reviewing for the test. Possible solutions. Look where it crosses the x-axis. Those are the two solutions right there. Okay, where does it cross the x-axis? And there's a table. Look where y equals 0. y equals 0 right there. y equals 0 right there. So our answers are negative 2 and 3. Look at the x for your answers. Look at the y to see where the 0 is. There's 1. And where it changes from positive to negative is it must be another 0 right there. So one of our answers is right there between negative 1 and negative 2, and the other answer is 3. All right, how many solutions? It has two. It crosses the axis in two places. All right, number five, this is a perfect square. It's one of those that just comes down at negative 7 and touches the x-axis and comes back up, all right? There's one solution. All right, this one here, what is the solution? Guys, one of them here is negative 4. The other here is 1. Just look at it, negative 4 and 1. That's what is required of x to make this 0. All right, this is number 7. Guys, you know when you bottom up, I just do the opposite. I take the 2 and put it underneath. Take that 3 and put it underneath. Just go backwards so it looks like this. Then it's easy to see the answer. If this equals 0, then x has to be either negative 1 half or positive 4 or 3. All right. This requires that you factor this one here. I factor it. X can be either negative 7 or X can be negative 4. All right, number 9. You had to first get it in standard form by adding 8 to both sides. So it looked like this and it was equal to 0. Had a greatest common factor of 2. I took it out. I factored that. So our answer is going to be either 4 or 1. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you.